Imagine a child dying from a simple scrape that becomes infected. Sound far-fetched? This spring, a Pennsylvania woman nearly died from a urinary tract infection, something 8 million Americans get every year, but hers was caused by a new, dreaded, drug-resistant bacteria. Antibiotic resistance is one of the most serious health threats we face today. We risk entering a post-antibiotic era where even simple infections can be deadly. Former FDA Commissioner Peter Pitts agrees. Shame on us if we wait for there to be bodies in the street before we step up to the plate and really begin to address this situation. For the last 70 years, antibiotics have done a great job killing our worst bacterial infections, like E. coli, staph, even the plague. But now we're seeing stronger, more resilient strains of bacteria that antibiotics cannot kill. They're called superbugs. An alarming CDC report reveals these drug-resistant superbugs infect around 2 million Americans each year, killing 23,000. Pitts says bacteria build resistance to antibiotics because doctors overprescribe them. Antibiotics only work against bacterial infections. The vast majority of patients seen by doctors have viral infections, a major difference in the medical world. Still, patients often push for a cure, and doctors usually prescribe an antibiotic, even though it isn't often necessary. And when a patient comes in, or you know, a, a mother or a dad brings in a child with an earache, and the child is crying and screaming, and the parent wants a prescription, and they know that antibiotics just broadly might be a value. Doctor thinks to herself, you know, I, I know that the antibiotic is not going to help this child, but it will give the parent what they want and it's not going to do any harm. And the fact is it does tremendous harm. Another reason for this liberal prescription policy is because it can take too long to determine the type of infection. So right now, unfortunately, the diagnostics still require a day or two or three you know, to properly understand if it is, in fact, a, a bacteria that can be treated with an antibiotic. So a lot of doctors will say, well, prophylactically, I'm going to give you an antibiotic. People with superbugs often receive what's known as antibiotics of last resort, which carry devastating side effects. Where not only are you uh, nauseous all the time, uh, but you really can't function. You're in, you're in bed. You're completely weak. You know, it's like having the worst flu you've ever had for a very long time hoping that it works. Because a lot of times people who develop these antibiotic uh, resistant bacteria don't get treated one time. Doctors have to continually experiment with more and more potent antibiotics as a cocktail to find out what works. These antibiotics severely disrupt the immune system, making the patient vulnerable to future infections. So if you allow kind of more mild antibiotics to become ineffective, and even those impact gut flora. And you move into more potent antibiotics, it's going to impact it even more, and that's worse. Doctors wouldn't have to use drugs of last resort if pharmaceutical companies would develop new antibiotics to fight superbugs. But there's very little incentive for them to do so. Developing these antibiotics take years, takes hundreds of millions of dollars, and many of them fail. To make things worse, superbugs are often contracted where you think you'd be most protected, hospitals. People going into hospitals for an appendectomy for a relatively minor operation, otherwise completely healthy, and walking out with a very tough bacteria, hospital-acquired infection that requires extremely potent antibiotics with very nasty side effects, and sometimes they get cured and sometimes they don't. You can help your chances by choosing a hospital with a low infection rate, making everyone who enters your room wash their hands, and asking your doctor to take out medical devices, such as catheters, as soon as possible. Even if you're not planning a hospital visit, there are still lots of things you can do to avoid catching a superbug. That list includes clean hands, proper sleep, less stress, avoiding processed foods. Also, make your body healthier and stronger by getting key vitamins, probiotics, and prebiotics through food, supplements, or both.
Lori Johnson, CBN News.